Thank you for taking time to watch this video on LaCert software. My name is Kevin Reinard, product specialist and 33-year LaCert employee. Today I'm going to show you some new integrated features that will help you improve your client relationships and your firm's productivity through a much more streamlined and efficient collaboration process. At LaCert we're working hard on offering you connected solutions from the way you collect data and collaborate with your client to how you prepare the return using LaCert, to how you deliver documents to your clients and to the IRS, and to how you receive payment. Now at LaCert we recognize that about 67% of your time is spent collecting documents and entering data. And the fact is, you receive this information in a number of different ways, through email, printed, mobile, telephone, and in person. Now, the first feature we're going to talk about to help you with this collaboration is called Intuit Link. Intuit Link is a new feature of LaCert that's a real change from the traditional client organizer. You can use it to request and receive source documents and communicate with your clients in one space online. It will help you augment the way you market your practice, improve how you engage with your clients, and help you receive source docs back a lot faster. So let's go ahead and take a look in LaCert at Intuit Link. So the sample client I'm going to use is Ann Jamison. And you can see I've got a column on the LaCert client screen for Intuit Link. If I want Ann to collaborate with me in this new way, I click Invite. Three steps to collaboration. First, you're going to create the request. The request will be sent directly to your Intuit Link account. Then you'll send it to Ann, and then you can view the organized source documents. Let's get started. So what it's going to send is the client data, which is basically the client's name and address and some of those things you find on the LaCert client screen. The checklist, which will be a request for documents based on the prior tax return, and the questionnaire, which is really the same exact questionnaire that you guys now send in the paper organizer. So let's click send. We have confirmation that her checklist and questionnaire are now ready to be re reviewed by you in Intuit Link. So let's go to Link. Now what I'm going to show you here is your side, the tax preparer side of Intuit Link. So let's go ahead and log in. And then when you get to the Intuit Link dashboard, the first thing you're going to notice across the top is it tells you how many clients you have in Link, how many have accepted your invitation to collaborate this way, and how many invites you have pending. And it also has a progress area where you can check the progress of all the different things that are happening with your clients so you know who's giving you the docs, who's answering the questions. So all we do now is we type in uh, Ann's information, start typing the letters of her last name, and it comes up here, Ann Jamison. I select her. Now, as you can see, all the requests that I just sent from LaCert are listed here. So I know everything that I'm asking the client for, a W-2 from Intel, 1099 INT from B of A, 1099 DIV from Chase. Okay, And if you want, you can ask additional questions, ask for additional documents here at the top. Yes, no questions, open-ended questions, or documents. But I, this is what I want to send, Ann. So I go over to the right. It says, you're almost there. Send the request. So I click Send. An email pops up. Now, we give you some email verbiage. If you don't like it, you can change it. But I like it. So I'm just going to click Send Evite Invite Slash Request. Now the request has been sent to Ann. What's going to happen is she's going to receive an email in her inbox. She's going to click the email and it will take her to what I'm going to show you now, which is the taxpayer side of Link. All Ann has to do when she signs up is put her email address in there and click Get Started. And you're going to, she's going to want to type in a password. So we'll just put in a password and we'll confirm it and then click Create Account. So now when she opens Link, the first thing it's going to do is welcome her and say Intuit, Link, Intuit Kevin Reiner. Now that would be your firm information and click Get Started. Now it's super simple how she uses this. We've tried to make the interface very, very simple for the taxpayer. There are buttons for Answer and there's a button for Upload. So the first thing she's going to do is click Answer Questions and she'll see that list of organizer questions that you sent to her. And she can go through about and go about answering the questions. Uh, did the marital status change? Did the address change? Now, if there is something like an address change and she says yes, on the right, you can, she can also add a comment and put in the new address so you have it in your Intuit link. 
But we'll go ahead and answer just a few of these questions, not all of them, just as our simulation. Now, once she's answered all the questions, the other tab on the top right is the upload. That's the request that you've made for these documents. Intel W2, 1099 from B of A, and the DIV from Chase. So if she wants to upload a doc, just click Add, Upload it, and then it searches her computer, and she can pick up here the Intel W2, and it's been uploaded. Then go through and upload the rest of the documents. It's that simple, really. Two tabs, Answer, which is the questions, and Upload. You can also click on the left to see the progress, and, and so it'll show her how many things she's completed, uh, how many things she has unanswered, and how many documents have been completed and are still yet to be uploaded. The other thing you can do here or that the taxpayer can do is they can actually link to a bank or brokerage. We work with about 200 and 250 or so banks and brokerages. So if she doesn't want to scan her documents or has yet to receive them, she can always click add accounts. And you'll see here in a moment, we show some of the, 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 the more widely used banks and brokers, but she can literally just type in the name of her bank and broker. She'll be prompted for the username and password, and then it will upload the document directly to link so you have access to it. So that's really all there is to the taxpayer side of this. Two buttons, answer and upload. Now back in Lacerd, if you ever want to check the progress on Anne, now it, instead of saying invite, it says view, and it will open into a link directly to her account. And you can see here are all the documents. The W-2 has been uploaded, and here are all the questions that she's answered for you. Okay. Now, again, back to the overview. Again, you can see here that it shows Anne's progress. She's done five of the 48 things that you've asked her for. Again, a combination of documents and of questions that she's answering. So super simple to do. So let's kind of recap what Intuit Link can do for you. It can streamline the way you engage your clients. It can replace the traditional client organizer. You can get information really two to four times faster and more securely with link collaboration. And you can easily track the taxpayer progress on the link dashboard. And overall, it's a great taxpayer experience. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is tax return preparation. Now, you guys are going to use the same program, LACERT program, that you've always used and loved. And I think the keys about LACERT are really it's a logical workflow that streamlines your tax preparation process through the use of our upper tabs. We also have, as you know, comprehensive tax calculations, in-depth diagnostics, so nothing is missed, and those productivity tools that you use all the time, like the missing data utility, the K-1 transfer, and the family link. So now let's talk about the next part of this, which is delivery. Delivering documents to clients, delivering documents to the IRS. Okay? And what we want to talk about now is a, is a process or a, a new product or new feature called e-signature. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about e-signature. What it is, it's, it's a new feature in LACERT that helps you streamline the way you file and finish an engagement. You can do it, a number of things with it. You can request electronic signatures on federal and state 8879s. You can get paid faster because in September of this year, e-signature will also include the ability for you to get your payment uh, using a client's credit card. You can e-file returns in one click and provide a final digital copy of your tax return to the of the tax return to the client. So let's go ahead and take a look now at in uh, the uh, e-signature component of Lacert software. Okay, so right next to the Intuit link box or column is another column that says e-signature, okay, or e-signature status. And the in the client file I'm going to use is my own called Kevin Reinert. If I'd like to request an e-signature for Kevin, all I do is click Request. It automatically knows that it's going to be sending the federal and the California 8879. And if I want, which I probably will, is include the watermarked client copy of the return so they can review it prior to making the signatures on these forms and click OK. So now we're going to request the e-signature. Kevin's name is up there. His email address has already been pulled in from the cert. There's a message. Please sign these documents if you want to change what the message reads. And you've got three attachments that you're sending. Federal, California 8879s, and the complete return. So let's click request e-signature.
you get a confirmation that, that tells you that the e-signature request has been sent. So now Ann, or Kevin in this case, is going to get his e-signature request in his e email inbox. So I'm going to go ahead and open up another browser. And let's go ahead and uh, log in. I have a Gmail account that I've created for this simulation. And you can see right here, action needed, signature required for IRS Form 8879 and state forms. They open it up and they click Review Document. So now we're going to go through some security questions so that we can verify that Kevin is who he says he is. So let's go ahead here now and put in the street address. City. State. And zip. Now there are some optional questions over here to verify. They're not absolutely mandatory, but the last four digits of the social security number and the date of birth. But I'll go ahead and skip that for now and click next. Now the next screen we're going to see is really where we verify that Kevin is who he says he is. Now we're using uh, DocuSign. With DocuSign, as you probably have already used this for signing loan applications, it's really the most widely used doc signature program in the industry. And we use LexisNexis Risk Solutions Knowledge Base Authentication. It complies with IRS and federal agency guidelines. These are questions that only Kevin would know the answer to. Okay, which one of the following age ranges most class, uh, closely matches the age of Howard Reiner, which happens to be my father, 72 to 76? According to your driver's license, approximately how tall are you? I'm six feet zero. And which of the following addresses have you ever been associated with? And I don't notice any of these, so I say I've never been associated with any of these. Then I submit the answers. Now, once that's done, Kevin's been authenticated. Then what happens is we pull up the actual signature documents. You agree to the terms and click continue. Now here's the 8879. Now below this, below the Fed and the state, is the actual tax return here that's attached to the same PDF so Kevin can review his return. But all I do to start signing the documents is just follow the prompts. Click next and it takes me to where I sign the di digitally, automatically inserts my digital signature, adopt and sign. Then I'm on the field where it wants to know the date of the signature. We'll put in 6-15-2015. Click next takes me to the state signature line, it updates that, and I put in the state signature on the state doc. And hit, and that's it. How simple, right? Now click finish. So basically now the client's digital signature has been received. The client has access to this document online for up to a year because one of the things we know that happens is they come back maybe a couple of times and or request additional uh, requests that you send them their document or their tax return. So now they have access to it for up to a year uh, in DocuSign. Okay. Now back in Lacert, once this docu uh, the document has been signed, you will see a notification right here in the e-signature status that you've received the signed documents. And if you click the link, those two attachments are actually part now of the client file. So super simple. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention about, do about this DocuSign process is we are adding, as I mentioned, in September of 2015, the ability that once your client signs the document, they'll be able to click a button and pay you immediately with a credit card. Because one of the things we know you guys struggle with, in addition to getting a signed doc back, which can take five to seven days, is receivables. Sometimes it takes up to 45 days to receive a, um, a payment from your client. So what we're trying to do, as you can see in this process, is do the 8870 line electronically so it gets back and have them pay for it. And another component will be that at the time the client signs and pays, the program will automatically e-file that tax return to eliminate the double and triple, uh, triple checking that you're having to do on the e-filed returns. Okay, so let's pop back in here. So remember, the benefit of this new solution to deliver to clients and IRS is that it is a complete finish and file solution that'll save you a ton of time. We have integrated e-signature using industry-leading DocuSign. You'll now have payment invoicing and collection as part of the 8879, and you'll also have the one-click e-file. Now, last thing I wanted to talk about was file storage. You know, once everything's done and you're saving documents and things, you know, we're very pleased to have two different options for you now. So we have our LACERT document management system that we've always had for about a decade now, and it works great. It is a local install, and your data is all on your own hard drive. You also now have the option of Smart Vault, and Smart Vault, like DocuSign, is the leading client uh, document storage and portal capability in the industry. 
And this Smart Vault is an absolutely online cloud-based product that you have anytime, anywhere access to. So if you're wanting a cloud-based, really good application for document storage and client portals, uh, Smart Vault works very, very nicely with Lacert. So as you can see, we've been working really, really hard on these connected solutions for you guys from how you collect and collaborate now with our awesome new Intuit link to how you prepare the return like you've always done in Lacert to how you can now deliver documents like 8879 to your client and at the same time receive payment and have the file automatically emailed. So we're really working hard to save you time. So to recap, remember Lacert helps you improve your client relationships and your firm's productivity through a much more streamlined and efficient collaboration. Thank you very much for watching.